So some people have been commenting and saying uh, you run a channel named Old Man Builds, but when you click on there, I don't look that old. Well, guys, ages and everything, I guess. It kind of goes to how my body feels. The honest truth is I'm 48 years old. So, yeah, not exactly young, but not exactly old either. So why is it that they call me Old Man Builds? And it has to do with how my body is. So I'll just explain it, not a sob story, guys. So please just understand that things are the way they are and they're not going to change. So what it is, is in my 20s, I had a back surgery. L5S1, they fused it together. So I have two plates in there, four screws and a little basket. It's all healed up. It's held together. It, uh, it doesn't allow me to do a whole lot of range of sit-ups or anything else or you know, go around and do things that everybody else does. Uh, on top of that, uh, I don't learn my lesson well. So, at least when I was younger, uh, I would actually go back to work after it. So, I worked for a soda company. I was stocking shelves uh, with soda pop, about 1,400 cases a day. And then I went to uh, drive a truck, and I did that off of a side loader. And, you know, about 2,600 cases a day, somewhere in there moving things around, doing things. Uh, and I broke my back. And about six months in after it happened, I went to the company doctor and he basically just told me, uh, you know, it's muscle spasms. Here you go, here's some pills, go back to work. So I did what everybody would do and I just did that. So about six months later, I broke the other side. Now, let me tell you something. After a year of it being an absolute agony, and breaking the other side and, you know, working another six months, I found myself in a parking lot and I couldn't get up and I just couldn't walk anymore. I could feel my feet. They're there. I could feel my legs, but my back had gone out so bad that lifting any weight, even my own body weight to do anything was just difficult. Now guys, I'd been about 220 pounds the entire time I was working, um, I, you know, I'm ballooned up now about 325. So, you know, a lot different person back then. And I would always push myself through things no matter what. And this is just one of those times that I couldn't do that. So I went, you know what I mean? Went through all the insurance stuff, took years and finally got the surgery. When I got in there, the, you know, it was funny. I changed my doctor from the company doctor to the surgeon. And within a week and a half, I was in surgery. He had told me that I not only broke the neck of the dog, which is just, I guess, a bone in the back. Uh, on one side, I broke it on the other as well. So it was completely an unstable region in my back. So he fused it together right away. You know, three days later, I'm walking out of the hospital with a giant brace on for about three, four weeks. Got it. Oh, you know, you think the pain of, Breaking your back's bad enough, but try working through it, man. You literally are crying inside. Like, if you don't physically show it, like I don't show a whole lot of it, man, it just tears you up as a person. It just tears you down. You're, you're not the same person that everybody else is. So, you know, that's pretty much it on that side of that. But then once you get the surgery, things start to change as well. So, like a young moron, I went back to work and started throwing cases again. Well, as you could tell, it didn't end well. It permanently tried to ruin the disc right above it. I just got out right before it completely trashed that one as well. So, you know, a lot of people in that industry, they, you know, one, two, three discs is nothing to them. They continue to break things and work things and guys, I couldn't do it anymore. You know, I'm a tough guy, you know, but I'm not, I'm not doing that. So after that, you know, I, uh, I walk in. So get back to the original premise, you know, the video is I walk like an old man it is really what it is. So kind of a little bit hunched over, kind of a little bit slow, grown when I get up, you know, part of throwing all those cases all, all the time, man, tears up your knees too. So I have a knee that is supposed to get uh, cleaned out and I refuse to do it. I just refuse. Uh, and there's a reason for that. You know, when you're in your 20s and you break your back, and I'm talking, you know, 22 years old, you make your peace with God before you go in and get your surgery. And I did that. 
now at this point in my life at 48, I'm not making that same gamble. Yeah, it get worse and yeah, I'll have to wear a brace and things like that, but I'm not going under that knife again. One of the main reasons for that, guys, is I got gout from the surgery. So what happens every once in a while is the acid in, in the joints turns into a crystal form and then it makes it like thousands of knives in that uh, joint. So you can't move the joint. It's just locked in place. And the medicine for it, you know, $800 for a script is kind of outrageous. So if you can get a script like I have now, it's like, you know, 150 bucks. But it doesn't do a quarter of what the, you know, the Euloric would do. So I kind of have to live with it based on the financial situation. You know, uh, breaking my back cost me everything. You know, it used to be one of those, hey, make a lot of money you know, on a truck. Have a nice big 4x4, four four, nice big house. You know what I mean? Everything else. Now I got a, you know, little thousand square foot house, man, in retirement. And, you know, all those luxuries have gone away. Anyway that's pretty much it so i get the gout every once in a while so what you probably noticed is i haven't done a whole lot of gravity flyer videos lately and guys i'm just not up to it i can't do it physically so i mean it's going to clear up don't get me wrong i'll get back to it but what happened here in the last couple of weeks was my whole left side so my elbow here went ahead and it got gout in it and when that happened, then it went, it went to my fingers. So if you can imagine this, your elbow is stuck in a 90 degree angle and you can't use your fingers. And that's what was going on. So I took the medicine, started to clear it up. Well, a week into that, my back went out. So here I am, my back completely out, guys. You know, you're, you're squeezing your cheeks together just to stand up. So you can't lift any weight. You can't do anything else. Even like moving forward in your chair hurts. Say you get stuck in your couch and it sinks in a little bit. Well, trying to get out of that, man, it sucks. So it was just like two weeks of full pain. And I'm in the third week now. So, you know, it wasn't like it just went away. Uh, you know, some of it dissolves, some of it moves on. So my right hand right now, I'm dealing with it in my middle finger and my finger right next to it. And I can tell you that's like torture in itself. But, you know, I'm going to have to pull through that one as well. So, you know, maybe in another week I'll be okay again. It's not anything else. It's not, you know, any infection or anything like that. It's gout. I went to the emergency room for it several times over the years. And that's what it is. And they pump you up full of meds. So, this time I just did it at home so there's not much to do about it you just kind of live with it and get on you know so that's not the only reason you know you walk in once in a while you can't move your joints or anything like i said i might be like 80 as far as my body or something you know what i mean but uh, i'm only 48 so what i did to change my life I was starting to uh, diet and stuff. So I would be like 320. I'd get it down to about 175 pounds. And then the gout would kick in. Or my back would go out. Or it'd start swelling my ankle. That that happened last week too. it swell your ankle you can't walk. So i just walk like a mile a day and eat nothing. And it's not about discipline. Let me just tell you that right now. It's not about that. You know, I had a little 4 inch by 4 inch container, you know, like this. And it's about maybe, what, an inch and a half deep? That's about all I ate for the day, every day with water. And I'd lose the weight. The problem is, is when your body starts breaking down, you're not able to do that anymore. You know, as strong a mind as you can have, trying to diet while your body's joints are locking up is just impossible. You just want to get through the day and hope it's better tomorrow. So... You know, I'll get back to that as well. As soon as my body's able to, I'll get back to walking. I'll lose some more weight. Guys, I've been at it for four years. It's like a yo-yo, okay? At some point, my body's got to be healthy enough to get better. Now, I've been seeing my doctor, taking care of it, looking at things. And the, and the bottom line is, is just pay for the more money for the expensive meds. That's, that's really what the answer is here. So there's no getting around it. I'm going to have to find a way to do it. And that's just it. And being said that, I don't need any charity or anything like that, guys. It's not what this video is. 
I'm just explaining why they call me the old man. So, <laughs> that being said, you got all that going on. You know, God blessed me with a few more gifts to tell me, you know, hey, stop working like that. Uh, a second generation cabinet maker, so I did own a cabinet business for a while. And, you know, all the saws and stuff, take away your hearing. Well, it wasn't bad. You know what I mean? I had like 30% hearing loss, you know, getting into my 40s. And then about 46, you know, two years ago, I lost another 40% of my hearing. So I have 80% gone. Now I'm, I'm tone deaf in a lot of ways. So sirens coming by, I can hear it. High voltage, you know, making the sounds, the hissing, anything. I can hear all of it perfect, okay? I cannot hear deep voices. My son has a real deep voice. I haven't been able to hear him correctly for two years. So I finally got the hearing aids. You can see right here. I got the hearing aids. So they help, but they're a real pain when you get into high pitch, you know, voices or something like that. And the sirens come by, it drives me nuts. You know what I mean? Going to a restaurant and kids yelling. And it's not any of their fault, guys. It's not that. It's not what I'm saying. I'm just saying that the, because of the way my hearing goes, it's it's really difficult. So a lot of the times, if I'm out in my garage here in my man cave, you know what I mean, I, I'll just, I won't wear them. Yeah, I can get used to the volume of the TV and be okay with that. I don't need any loud sounds. So when I first got them, you know, it's a terrible thing. My wife would over be over there doing dishes or something, and it just felt like she was doing dishes with a sledgehammer. It was like so loud. You know what I mean? And, oh, it was awful. I just, I left the room, went outside and, you know, did my own thing. And, you know, they say you isolate yourself when you have these kind of injuries. And it's a fact. You will. You really have to fight that in what you do. So I, I find myself doing that. One of the great outlets that I have is this YouTube channel. So I can go on and check things out. I don't always have to be on camera. I can just, you know, do other things. And it really helps me stay in touch with other people and communicate and be on live shows with people. So that's really awesome. You know what I mean? It kind of keeps you involved with humanity and what everything's going on. Because there's times where you just want to crawl in a cave and not, and not come out. So, you know, in saying all that with all that injury stuff, you also get to the point where you're taking meds all the time. You're drinking. You're throwing up all the time. You're just not a healthy person. So... You know, as it be, I lost all my teeth as well. You say, well, you're smiling. You know, what's going on? There you go. Old man. You know, you can say what you want. I don't have a single tooth in my mouth, and I like it better that way, to be very honest with you. The absolute pain I went through with every bit of those teeth having in pain, you know, along with my other pain. God, you know, it's bad. So, you know what? I figured out a long time ago. One foot in front of the other, keep moving forward. You know, so people get discouraging on this thing and say, oh, you're, you know, you grab your fly, you're never going to fly or you never do this. Buddy, I've been went through way too much, way too much. Your little comment isn't going to bother me one bit. Uh, <laughs> for the stuff I've been through, man, many times I've been told no and many times my body tells me no every day. You know, it's, it's not going to bother me at all. I'm going to win in this, guys, and that's the way it is with my gravity flyer and stuff like that. You know, I work too hard. Work too hard to do much pain for anything else. So, why do they call me old man builds? Well, it has nothing to do with my age. It has everything to do with how my body functions. There's just days that I can't do anything. So, you'll see me skip a couple days of doing videos or something, and then uh, out of the blue, I feel better, and... You know, I, I shoot out three or four videos in a day. Consistency in a job isn't going to ever work for me ever again. You know, I do this because I love to do it. And I, I'm good at what I do. You know, if I want to put a circuit together, I, I can do it without a problem. And I can make it work. And then I can teach other people how to do it. And I generally try to do that. You know, sometimes uh, we all get in our own little headspace and don't want to see everything else, but I generally try to take everybody's points of view and incorporate it. It might not be in that very specific moment. It might be later. But anyway, guys, that's why they call me the old man. And my kids call me that all the time. You know what I mean? Oh, you know, dad's grunting again when he gets up. Dad, you know, 
he can't take out the trash today or, you know, you can't do this or that. And then I always pull him in here, you know, <laughs> come here, use this drill. You know what I mean? I can't think it, I can't wrap my hand around it today. You know, or, hey, come get this out of my cabinet, whatever. So I kind of have a mess of my garage right now because I haven't been able to clean it up. And I had a lot of projects going on. So anyway, that's it. Guys, I'll just give you a real quick a gravity flyer update while I'm at it. Where are we at in it? Basically, I have a Tesla coils to build. So... What I found out in building these things is I didn't have the thing in resonance. Even the one I was using wasn't in resonance. So why was it blowing it out when it pushed back on it? Because it wasn't in resonance. So I would have a feedback end of the number one coil that was blowing it up. And it would go directly to the uh, transistor I was using. So it would overheat. So what I did was I took the time to research this, look into it. Exactly the length I need for uh, number two coil. Exactly the length I need for number one coil. Everything, right? So I know exactly how to build this thing now. And with Sean's help, uh, he's been helping me out and figuring this thing out. We've been going back and forth. We're just going to put together a graph. You know what I mean? In, in like a chart, line by line. This coil at this width, at this length, gives you this frequency. And that's all you need. And here's the result from it. So anytime you want to build one for your project, it'll be easy. You just refer back to this and go, okay, the old man said, you know, we need to use number 30 gauge wire. And he said to build it at exactly so many inches long on exactly uh, so much of a diameter of a pipe. And we're good to go. We got a sec, we got a secondary. We just got to put a primary in it, which are all going to be generally the same. And then we can tune it. Take a whole five minutes and you have a Tesla coil. It's perfect for any project that you have on an easy pre-made circuit that you don't have to think twice about. That's the beauty of the ZVS circuit. And then the, the second part is power. Oh, yeah. Yeah, baby. Let's get some power into this thing. So you can run a primary power source. Could it anywhere from 12 volts up to 40 volts and leave that as your primary. You take a switch and you switch it and hit your secondary power source. So it turns off your primary, turns on your secondary, which is a higher number. So immediately you jump in power by about 20 volts. Guys, that's amazing. That's exactly perfect. That's what we need for this gravity flyer. I'm not going to hear the feedback. Not unless it's really huge. And usually things blow up before I hear it. So I'll just shortcut it. I know what he's doing. It's not like I don't. You know, I've done this enough, seen enough results. There's only so many times you can spin this thing up. And if you're not seeing it by now, I, I don't know what to tell you. You know, as many times as I've run this every single day, I know it. So, anyway, guys, hopefully I'll be back to resume that here in, uh, you know, a couple days. I'll have, uh, you know, at least one Tesla coil up so I can test my gravity flyer. Sean and I will work on the whole thing for the whole project. We're going to be good to go. And we're going to get this thing up and, and, and running for that a big video for that. It'll probably take some good time to show everything. Uh, a little bit of a longer video. But you know what? Hey, if it aids everybody in making one of these things, by all means. Exactly what we need to do. So we'll upgrade our little uh, you know coil spinner because I can't do it with my fingers no more. They, they do not work. That's as, as far as I can turn them right now. And no more. So... Until that, you know, heals itself, I'm going to have to get my kids out here and run a couple drills and get this thing going up to the right uh, speeds and stuff. So, you know, maybe a little more automatic in there so that I don't have to rely on anybody else to do it. That That's probably going to be good. Anyway, that's pretty much it, guys. Uh, we're going to get into that here soon. But hopefully I should be, you know what I mean, off the bench here in, what, a couple days, maybe maybe four days at the most, and then we'll be back to uh, having our testicle thing. So in about a week, I'll be running my uh, gravity flyer again. So, but if you ever had a question on why, you know, all my builds, like I said, it's not to be sorry for me here, guys. I'm doing fine. It's just, you know, everybody has their own thing they go through. Everybody pushes through it. Everybody gets to the end. You know what I mean? So the best thing you can have is a great attitude and get through it. I have it. You know, I'm not messed up in the mind. I'm 100% solid there. 
So you just, it's just not going to take me down. Not like that. So anyway, that's pretty much it, guys. That's what's going on. We got an update on the gravity flyer thing. You got an understanding of why they call me old man bills. Maybe you understand a little better. Maybe I'll get a few more gray hairs to kind of go with the, the title. You know what I mean? I always tell, I always tell my kids, I earn those things. I'm not dying them. Uh, you know, I'm not that vain. I earned every single one. I keep telling them, a couple there for you, a couple there for you, some for my wife. I earned it. You know what I mean? I've been married about 22 years now. So, you know what I mean? Hey, I earned every gray hair I got from all the stress I had to put up with. So, anyway, the joking aside, man, thank you guys for watching today. If you like what you saw today, like, share, subscribe, comment, do all those fun things. Don't feel sorry for me. Just understand we're going to push ahead. Have yourself a great day, guys. Thank you.